Hi, it's Jess here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to um, the last episode in my spiral bound journal. So we've got to the point where I'm going to bind it. I'm going to decorate the cover after it's bound so that I kind of know where the, where the rings are. So I have a bind it all. I haven't used it for a very long time, but... Uh, so I had a little look at some videos to remind myself and it all came flooding back. But funny thing is, there's a little there's a little um, door here that says open and I have never opened this in my life. And um, that's where all the bits go when you <laughs> when you've um, when you've punched the holes. I had no idea. And I had absolutely shed loads. I mean, I've only this is just from practicing. Actually, there's more in there than just practicing yesterday. I obviously didn't clear it all. So you are supposed to clear this from time to time. And um, yeah, I was I was quite I was qu I was quite grateful because it kind of showed that I have, in fact, used this quite a bit. I clearly didn't clear it all yesterday. There must be a huge reservoir <laughs> under there where they all go because I cleared out. A pile yesterday and I've only met, I've only had a practice and it wasn't all them colours. I've done white paper and purple so I'm wondering if more come in when I do that. That looks empty to me but yeah so at least it does show I have used it but I had no idea. So yeah, total face palm. So I'll just clear those off. Obviously, you can leave it quite a while <laughs> before you uh, before you open it. So yeah, I um, had a little practice and I had a little look at my instructions, and it is designed to sort of use things with half inch increment. And then there's a guide here to tell you how many holes you need and things. Um, the cover six and a quarter, so it's not a half inch increment. So to get round that, you use the centre arrow. So that's what that's what I've done, and I kind of created a template. So to practice, I made a notebook just just so that I knew that I could not spoil this and get it all sort of even and lovely with the right sort of um, space at the top and, and the bottom and that I put it on right. Um, I did do this twice, um, made all the holes, not a problem, no mistakes in that. But when it came to bind it, um, I got multiple wires and um, I used, I kind of measured this and thought that a three eighth uh, wire would be okay. So I measured it and it came under the three eighth. So I thought a oh, three eighth would be fine. It wasn't. Um, I had to go up to the half. The, th this literally wouldn't open with, with the three eighth. Um, so I put it on and then had to pull it off so I wasted that but not to worry now the biggest wires I've got are an inch you can get an inch and a quarter but I don't have any so measuring this and it did say don't make them too tight measure and go and go up so when I measured this this is now measuring at like when you when you push it tight it's measuring at just under three quarters so i'm hoping an inch would be fine but i did have to take a few pages out um these these because of the tickets on both sides this is actually quite thick um so i took those two out and then i took the folded sheets that were the other side of it just so that it it looked okay um in the book um as you turn the page from whence it came, it was after here, I think. So 
we now end on that, which I quite like because it kind of matches there. So that looks OK. And then at the other end, that's OK. That side, I might, I might stamp on there. I might not. So, so that's that. I mean, I could, in fact, take this last sheet out, but I like that it sort of matches. Um, but yeah, I need that in to divide those two. So I am hoping that it's all right. I figured as long as I get the holes right, if the wire is actually too small, then I can just order some quarter inch wires and um, do it again. But the process will be, will, be, will be there for you if you wish to follow. I've had a, somebody comment about having a cinch and um, I'm wanting to use it for this. So looking forward to um, me doing that bit but obviously this isn't a cinch this is a bind it all so they are quite different the cinch is much bigger um, so the principles will be a little bit different so for this one I've got to use the center point and um, the uh, there was instructions here for using the center point method so I followed that and then that's to remind me about when it comes to binding doing it right because I did it wrong uh, first time so the uh, I've made two little templates so I've made one that's the same height as the cover um, so that's six and a quarter and then one that's the same height as the pages so that's six inches I have found the center point of each of them and so what you do is you find your centre point, you push it in, you put this onto, you've got open continuous cover and inner pages. The cover and inner pages, you would use those settings if it was half inch increments. But as we're doing one that's not, we need the open and the continuous. So we push this here to A and then that means this is free to go backwards and forwards. And when you're, so that is what we want for the cover bit. It's free to go backwards and forwards. When it comes to doing the inner pockets, we do want to push it to, oh no, that's open. We do want to push it to continuous all the way up to the B. And what that does is it pushes this little knob bit. Can you see? There's a little sticky out bit there. Little sticky out bit there. And that helps you to hook round one of these holes. It's the same. It's the same size as the punch out hole and that helps you line it up when you push in because it's continuous when you're making more holes it will make sure that it's they're all perfectly lined and perfectly spaced okay so i'm going to use the template to help me so i'm popping the i'm going to take the tag out so i'm popping i'm going to push that back popping the cover in and popping in my template and I'm lining the template up with the cover and that center line which I drew so it's seeable um, so that that is at the center point so now I can take that away and I can push that all the way down. And that's my first, my first hole there. Always a little bit scary. So now I need to make the three holes that side and the three holes that side. I mean, you could bind it so it's just there, but I think that's a little bit small. So I'm gonna practice by doing it on the other side of the template. So got that up to the middle. I might have put it in the second one. I'm trying to remember now. 
didn't didn't write it down of course and i did it last night and i've had a sleep so i might have put it in the second one yeah i must have put it in the second one to get me one all the way up to there yeah do need to put it in the second one it's a good job i practiced this again you know when you got in my head i was like ah, i'm sorted i know what i'm doing there so put it in the second one to get that all the way to the end let me just Double check, that is what I did. Hook that. Hook that in there. Make sure it's pushed right down. There we go. Yeah, that's how I did it. So, second hole. Push that in there, push that down. I might get a teensy weensy bit on the top. No, just shaved a little bit there, but not much. Just gonna take these off. I keep them on there so I don't lose them. So now we're doing the other side. Again, put the second hole through that little square, push it down. That's our cover sorted. Now we'll do the other one in exactly the same way. So remove the tag. Make sure you put the right end at the bottom. Push that back down again for continuous. Put that in so we're in the right position, lining up. And that's probably difficult to see on camera. I'm happy we remove that. This is quite thick, but it will go through. There we go. Push that forward now so that my me, me hole comes forward. Go to the second. Push it down. There we go. And again on that one, second hole. I watched somebody do this. I watched several videos just to make sure I got it right. And um, somebody was doing the cover and they they didn't have this all the way down. So they weren't straight. They kind of went that way, which kind of spoiled the cover. So it's worth taking, taking the time to do that. That's fabulous. So that's them done. So now we need to do our pages. So we want the different the different um, take the uh, thing out again. Now I could do several pages together. That one's not the same size, so we'll just do one for now. Line that up together. Put that in there. At the centre point, bunch. Now you could go and do all the centre points and then do the end. So this one is not quite not quite the same size. So I'm sort of eyeballing it to be in the centre. And actually, it doesn't have to be in the centre, and it would actually probably be better if 
it's down the one side. Otherwise, if you look at my template, that is covering those holes. If I centred it, you'd have a bit at the top and a bit at the bottom being cut. I don't really want that. I guess I could trim it off a little bit if I was going to do that, but I don't want to. So we're bringing it down so that it's flush at the bottom and then it misses that at the top. So uh, that's that's down to preference as to how you want to do this. So that is what we do and again we've got we've got an envelope there that's going to be going to be quite different so I'm just going to do these different pages moved it what you can do is just thought about this is what I can do is I can use this I can pull this out cooking on gas now so there we go so I can move that so actually get that to where the center is slightly that way a bit once this is in the place I want it to be it will act as a guide so now I've got that so it's on the center so actually don't need that anymore that should work this doesn't need the center mark oh i haven't put anything in it so again we need to think about where that is that is about right there I am going to put it in for this so that I'm holding it in the right place. There we go. So now I'm going to move that up out of the way. So I need to come down here. So go into the second hole. Grand second hole that side. So that's that's the envelope sorted. So I'm just showing you these ones and then I'll just speed through and do it. Don't need to watch me make all the holes so it is a much longer winded way of doing it You can do this whilst watching Netflix. So that's going to be further down the bottom there. So they're all heated up like that and then they should line up with the holes on the cover with the gap 
either side and they do <gasps> cooking on gas so the only other thing that i wanted to check was if my tag still fitted so that tag's fine there's clearance there is this tag fine right that's gonna be i might have to just shave a little bit off these tags because that might be a bit awkward once the wire's in we might have a slight problem there once the wire's in but again there will be movement actually um so they might fit so we'll just have to wait and see come the end so i'm going to continue to do that binding i hope that's made sense um and then I'll come back to you when I'm ready to put the rings on. Okay, so I've been through and done all the holes. I had one casualty. I did try and get a little bit clever and put more than one sheet at a time. But this slipped. And that's what I was saying about it's really important to make sure it's all the way down the bottom. But it was all right because I had a spare from those ones I took out. So, I mean, I can just chop that down and I can still use it. And so I just thought what I'd do was I'd go through, I noticed a couple, obviously with user error, with um, cutting the paper, there is um, a few sheets that are a little bit close, like there, that's really close, so that's now split. So I thought I might take those and just trim a few. Um, because I will find that I, that will annoy me so I'm just gonna go down there so now that's now that's better that does not look straight though because that edge wasn't straight there that's a bit better so that will be fine that can sit nicely this one again user error there at the bottom so i'm gonna i'm gonna uh slice that off as well i'm not gonna slice the top off because of my tab if i'd have put the tab a bit lower i could have done but we'll leave that one as as is thankfully none of my nice dsp sheets are like that they're okay we're okay there with that one it's quite nice to have varying sizes of your pages anyway. I might slice a bit off the bottom there. Don't like the look of that. No. This one okay, yep. I'm gonna take the top and bottom off this because I don't like the look of it. So that'll be nice, a little different size sheet there. So little happy accidents. So there isn't too many of them. Might take, no, I'm gonna leave that one. So these are all right. That Edith Holden's okay. This sheet again, I'm gonna, going to take the bottom off and the top off because me no like yeah so there wasn't many that one take that one off there there we go See, that sheet's perfect. I think it was just with me cutting the measuring the six inches was just ever so slightly out on a couple of sheets. So that, that is them all, them all done. So just, so you might find you need a little bit of cleaning up to do. So we'll get rid of them. So now, I'm 
I just get this all ready. So I'm going to take and take these, do that. It will be easier if I just take the tags out. So that's all the tags out and they're laid there in the right order. And um, so that was 12 tags. I thought, oh, let's see how many tags I actually made. I made 12 plus the two that are in the smaller envelope, which I haven't took out because they're nowhere near the spine. So that's like that. And there are a couple of sheets that aren't um, that aren't to the bottom. They're lined up differently. So we'll just move that like so. And that's okay. So I think if we just try and put the wires on, it will, it'll all work. So that's all like that. And to the way to put your wire on is you hold the book the way you would want your book to be. And then you take the back cover and you wind it around to the front, okay? You don't take your back cover off and put it on the front or put it on the front like that. You have to make sure as if you were opening the book and take it all the way around so it sits on the front like so. That's how you want to do that bit. And then you take your wire, which I haven't cut down yet. I think I'm gonna go for a black wire as opposed to silver. That's my choices, but I'm going for a black one. Right, so get my rings and you need a little wire color, 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 cutter. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve rings. So one, two, I might go from the bottom, that looks a little bit bent. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So then we just cut cut there. Take that out, corrugated cardboard. So that is my ring. And then we're going to insert these through the pages first. And then they'll come out at that back cover. So this is when it might get a little bit tricky. To do and I think on the cinch there's like a holder for doing this. Whereas it's not quite so easy. I think because this is I did the notebook much easier, but because there's ones at different heights, that's what's making this a little bit harder. So we're just folding them around. Put that to the bottom. And then that's easily fed through. And then when we get to these I can then decide we'll go this the bottom so it's so it's nicely in the middle. I might put the Edith Holden up a bit so it's at the same height but that one comes underneath. So 
so they won't fall off that end because that will that will stop it you get what I mean so I want this in the middle can't go all together in the middle because it's not even so it's slightly more to the bottom than the top do that one to the top just adds a little bit of interest having your pockets and pages at different heights Okay, so that's them all on. So we've got our rings like like so. So the flat bit is on the pages side and the pokey through bit is there at the back cover. So what will happen is when this is cinched together or binded together, it's not a cinch you've got there, Jess. Um, that flat bit will be there against the back cover, which is where you want it to be. If I show you the notepad that I made um, earlier, you've got your flat bit there. And that's what, you don't want that bit on the front cover really. You want that hidden at the back. Okay. Hope that makes sense so now you need your machine back and what you need to do is now you need to be going to this opening here and you've got this is the bit that's gonna when you push down this pushes through and that's what pushes the wires um, together okay and there's markings on there to an inch and that's how big, obviously, you change it. You just use your screw to change it to whichever size you've got. You also get these little measurers. And um, you can sort of double check that that is an inch wide. And I say the biggest it goes up to is an inch and a quarter. And I think, because I was looking at, I've had my wires for ages and I was looking at buying them. And... Um, I've got a feeling the cinch might go a little bit bigger, I don't know. So, obviously, your wire is bigger than the hole, so you're doing it in two bits. You want to make sure that your wires, like that, with so that's kind of like the flat bit, and so you put it down like that, and then you just push, leap of faith, just push all the way down and that should push it into where you want it to be and then just move down to make sure you've got all the bits so that's now pushed it into a nice little circle any bit that you think might need redoing just go back if it's not quite gone over enough and that is it. And then, dun, 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 moment of truth, see whether or not it will open nicely. So now that winds round to the back. And that is it. That is it bound. We have got a slight, I think because the book is thicker at the bottom and thinner at the top, that's why we've got ever such a slight issue there at the top there. So I'm going to have to try and do a little bit of fiddling there. So let's put all the tags back in. 
and see what happens. That's a good way now of checking the tags fit. I am quite pleased. Yep, that fits with how this whole thing's turned out. Oh, I didn't put a piece of paper in there. So these pages are turning nicely, that's okay. Bit of bead of hold in there. That flips out. Yep, tag's going in. So, I'm not I'm not over satisfied with that bit at the end. They need to be further back. Maybe win time. A bit of pinching. That'll work better. Oh, bit of pinching. That seemed to work. So yeah. Need to investigate maybe possibly something's up there. But meanwhile, let's decorate our our cover. So my idea was to make a frame. I'm not sure now that's gonna to be too big that one. So I'll have to go, yeah, we'll have to go that one and the one smaller than that and I was going to put a flower I was going to choose one of these white flowers on the inside something just nice and simple so we can still see the cover but we've got like a frame a frame around it so where's my other stitch rectangles and we'll go for the one smaller So I'm going to cut a frame. So it's about what colour to cut the frame. I do like the look of that. Um, let me think. Okay, so I had a thought and I had a play and I came up with a black frame and then I felt I needed some some words to go on it so I stamped these words heat embossed in white and thought they'd go really well. I cut the um, the landlocked areas of the flower out as well so oh that's not the same one but those sort of bits there I just used a craft knife to cut them out thought that would look cool so I'm just going to stick this down going to use some tweezers to hold on. I think I might use some Fabri-Tac because it's going on to fabric. And that might make it stick a bit better. I'm hoping that I can. it doesn't come out too fast on this nozzle. It doesn't seem to. Because I don't want it to come up. Right, so now yep, I think that's that's in place, so I'm gonna give it a bit of a press and then I'm gonna use Fabitac on this as well because this is also sticking onto fabric and I think that'll ensure that it won't come up. And I'm going to 
give it a bit of a spread so I won't spread it out with my spreader I think that's where we want it now just give it a wipe there's a few stringy bits there's a bit there where it ripped where I was cutting it there we go so now it's just a matter of deciding thoughts memories and it's whether or not I want the and to be on top of the stem or not no I think I do want it like that yeah about that So that is it done. So there we have it. I'm uh, quite liking the way that's turned out. And so we have a flip through. So we've got tag there, goes in and out easily. Beautiful papers. Another tag there. Still undecided if I want to add any words on there. Nice little flip out. That's a page from the original book. And I just realised I actually wanted the binding to go on that side. Not that it really matters. Got an envelope there. There's nothing in it at the moment. But all sorts could go in there if you wanted and it just holds in place with the stamp pretty on that side another one of those papers and there we've got a different sort of pocket there with a tag and then there there's just a bit of paper in there doubled over for writing on and of course, I've got videos on everything. So this is my first ever ring bound journal. And I have to thank Tracy Fox for the for the idea and the inspiration. So that's that. Ended up cutting down some of these pages, but I actually really like that there's different size pages. Another tag there. Old book, old music page, which I added a doily to, to give it a little bit more strength. Some more writing space. There's lots of spaces for writing and you can put photos and whatever on there. So I've got videos on making the stamps and the labels as well. And then it will flip out. Another book page which I folded up to form a pocket. And that's that sort of leisure book. I managed to get a mark on it, not that that matters like that. I like the colours. I thought they went well. I didn't want it all to be coffee dyed, tea dyed. So, like that. Love these labels. Just an old birthday book. Like that matches. I had another page in there, but I've took it out. I think it would have worked. I think it would have worked. Um, I think they would have held in um, but I made the decision to check it out because I was a bit scared of 
of this binding not being big enough. Another little flip. So now we're we're repeating. So another envelope. This one's a little bit smaller than the other one. And this one's got some two dyed paper in it. You can put all sorts in these envelopes. Quite like having those envelopes there to have bits put in. This one I did bind on the right side so that the white margin was that side. So now we're just sort of repeating. So it is the same. So I won't open the pocket. I've just moved some of these pages down a bit. So we see it all. It all works. All works well. With this ring binder on it. And there we are at the end. So that is the first ever ring bound journal that I have made. So there is, it can grow. You stuff things in, it will be absolutely fine. Splayed out. I haven't put a closure on it. Don't think it particularly needs one. I could tie a ribbon round it. You could tie something round this. You could get a long strip of ribbon. Here I am just thinking off the top of my head here. I've got a bit of ribbon. I've got a massive bit of ribbon there. But you could, you could maybe touch it round there somewhere and then just have it wound around and tucked under if you wanted. I'm deciding to leave it or I could put two holes front and back and have it tied that way but I'm just leaving it like that. Calling that done. So I hope you've enjoyed this series. Um, if you're a bit more of an expert on a bind it all than me, maybe you can. Now, I think it is just the fact that that is thinner than that end. Don't know how to get round that. But I'm quite pleased with the way that that's worked. And actually when it's shut, I'm quite glad I took those, those pages out. So yeah, I'm sure this won't be my last. I enjoyed that. So hope you enjoyed watching. Hope that uh, make you think about getting your binding tool out and have a go. I think if I did it again, I would just do bind it in the middle at six. I think I might try that next time. And then I might not have that, that issue quite so much. So yeah, thanks for joining me. I'll link down below to things that I've used that you can buy in my Stampin' Up shop. This paper is only available with the stamp set until the end of August. So you haven't got long left to be able to get this if you want to get your hands on that. Um, free with a £90 order. Um, yeah, that's it really. Okay, thanks for joining me and I will be back again soon with my sort of normal um, run of Sunday, Wednesdays and Fridays. I just put a few extra in to get this done. I didn't want it hanging around. Okay, bye for now.